Let's talk about uh, the Kushner family. Over the weekend uh, in a Beijing ballroom, uh, the Kushner family pushed a 500,000 investor visa uh, to wealthy Chinese uh, citizens, according to the Washington Post. Um, and in this, this was pushed by Jared Kushner, who was an advisor to the president, is worked, married to Ivanka Trump, very close to the president. This was pushed by his sister, Nicole Kushner Meyer. And uh, they were selling what we call, we consider the EB-5, which is the official name of it. We call it investor visas. The idea behind the investor visa is if you're willing to put up $500,000 into an investment, into a, a United States company, you can be fast-tracked into getting a visa. Uh, and there's, there's a lot of benefits to it. It's, it's a well-known uh, process. It's something that if you're in the investor class, you already know that if you want access to the United States, you just drop $500,000 and you can get access, get a visa for you, for your children, for your children to go to a, a, an elite school. Uh, and it's been utilized. It's well publicized. And the reason I emphasize that is because it was, it was cast as some type of awareness, as some type of informing the Chinese population of this opportunity, but it's an opportunity that has already been well publicized. And this is important because really what they're selling is, uh, they're not so much selling, but they're leveraging their proximity to the White House. Um, yeah, attendees were reminded, according to the Washington Post, they said, quote, attendees were reminded of the family's connection to the current administration with a slide depicting only Trump's smiling face. And, and so this is problematic in, in several, several facets, right? It's, it's problematic um, on the face of the, the visa in the first place, right? This is essentially buying your way into the United States. This is how you skip the head of the line. This is how we, we codify a certain level of class of citizens to come, of wealth, to come to the United States. That's problematic. It has been here before Trump, right? It has been here. I'm sure it has been leveraged by other administrations. Whether or not it's been leveraged so directly, so close in proximity, to the White House is arguable, questionable. But this is problematic in the sense that it exists and the way that it's been carried out for years. But it is also problematic to have the sister of a gentleman who is, has the direct access to the sitting president of the United States peddle this off as a means of, of, of in, in, enriching themselves. Uh, the tagline in the brochure said, invest $500,000 and immigrate to the United States. Uh, invest early and you will invest under the old rules. Talking about putting fear <laughs> into them, trying to incite them to move quicker, to make a faster decision. So because of the impending changes that, uh, the quote unquote impending changes from the Trump administration, get in now before the rules change because we want you to come in. Um, this is, this, this speaks to the really, we're dispelling with any pretense. We're dispelling with any, any type of uh, notion that the White House is not used as a means of generating m a massive amount of wealth for people in proximity to the White House. But this is a, this is, this is a, this is a direct connection to Jared Kushner's bottom line. This is not just money that his sister has in some type of escrow account that's separate from Jared. No, this is the Jared, this is the Kushner family wealth. And this adds to his bottom line. And what makes this more questionable is the fact that once reporters got wind of it, reporters were chased out. Reporters were, were essentially expelled from this, this, this conference, whatever you want to call it, so that no news could actually get out about it. And then that in itself became the news. And so here we are with the president of the United States who has conflicts of interest across the globe. We have the son-in-law of the president of the United States who benefits from this proximity to the president, who also has conflicts of interest across the globe, his sister directly peddling off EB-5 visas to invest, get access, and get your visa. I mean, at some point, at some point, somebody, I would think somebody would take notice. I would think that somebody would care. But again, we're at this weird place already in the first 110 days now, whatever days we are, 
where we are so accustomed to the conflicts of interest, we're so accustomed to uh, Donald Trump's idiocy, we're so accustomed to all of the things that he does that are not normal, that they have actually become normal. And so this, this is merely just a footnote. This is, this is not a, a, a huge deal. This is not anyone, no one is gonna sound the, the alarm. No one is going to, to, no one's gonna do a, a major investigation around this because we are now at the point where we are comfortable with Donald Trump and his, his affiliates, his family, his, his connections operating in this fashion. We're not even in the first half of the first year of Donald Trump being president. And we're already comfortable with the conflicts of interest. We're already comfortable with the glaring, glaring abuses of power. And we're also a com comfortable with the casual dismissal of any decorum, any idea that America, we're just, we're just comfortable with Donald Trump. And now it's not even news. You might not even hear it on much more of independent media. What do you think about that? I, I, I really, that, that one jumps out to me so loud. Um, it's just the obvious thing that we should be talking about, but we can't talk about it because uh, Russia and other things are just sucking the air out of the conversation.